Hi, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mendenhall here, and I wanted to share a few things before we did making numbers in different ways. If you happen to be using the My Math Book, like uh, my class is, there are a few things I'd like to show you. Uh, we are in chapter four right now with composing and decomposing numbers. On the inside page of every chapter is the standards being taught. There's a, a get ready page, but if you feel like your child already knows that, you can skip that. That is simply the warm up. You know, if they can see that four um, green kites is four. Okay, and then the preceding pages have, to the preceding pages to the lesson, have a vocabulary sheet that can be cut out. Um, it can also just stay in the book. What I like to do though is make sure that they do write and trace the word on the back. And it has um, different representations for um, five through nine. It has it as text, as the number, and then it also has it on the 10 frame. So ladies and gentlemen, that was our parent conversation. Here's your part for you. So if this is eight, which um, is on the 10 frame here, the first, the red is how many? Right, is five, because the first row is five, and we use one color, and then we use a different color to show the next three. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get to eight. If I'm showing four on a 10 frame, I use four of the same. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do four and the number five and maybe a few others on this board right here, on this whiteboard. And what are some different ways that we can represent that? So, let me grab my star over here. One, put one there. If I have one there, how many have to go here? Yes. So in this case, we have one and three, and that equals four, exactly. So when you're doing your problem and you have your shape right here in this track, and you're having to use bears and draw bears or circles or stars, and you're trying to show what four could look like, your four could look like this. What is another way that you could make four? Parents, pause here and have the students, have your children go through with you and give you other versions of four. Children, students, make sure you listen to your parent teacher. Okay, we're back. So let's do another version of four. I could take one away from that side. I could put it here and I still have four. What if I put them all in this first side? Do I still have four? Yes, because I have four and I have zero, right? And that, that's four. So there are several ways that we can show it, okay? With your parents, you could draw a picture on the scratch paper. You can find some objects, but could you come up with five, please? How could you show five? I'll start one here, you start yours. Now if I have three here, and I'm gonna put the rest on this side, what would it have to be? So I can move them several different ways between these two boxes, as long as I still have five. In fact, Let's make sure we have five up here. Then we can move them around, right? One, two, three, four, five. So we do have five, okay. So now move them around. Could we have two on the first side, three on the second side, and still have five? What if I keep going? This would be one and four. What if I kept going? 
now I have zero and five, right? So we can see there are many different ways to do it. I could have these five stars in the first box and no stars in the second box, right? Or I could have four in the first box and how many would be in the second box? Tell your parent teacher. Okay, so if four are in the first box, one would be in the second box. I want you to start paying attention to what you see around your house. I want you to notice when there are four things. Like right now, I see two green shoes right over there and two red shoes. And that would be four shoes. And I could show it like this. I have two green shoes and two red shoes. That's four shoes, right? We know shoes come in pairs. If I had five shoes, I'd have a problem, right? I'd have to go look for the other one. What else? What else could we see around the house? Maybe we have four seats at the dinner table every night. And how many people sit on this side of the table? And how many people sit on that side of the table? And how does that equal four? Well, in my house right now, we have Mr. Mendenhall and myself and Adam. And usually at our table, Mr. Mendenhall sits in the middle on this side and Adam's at this corner and I sit across from them. So that's how our table looks. We have three people and two people are on the far side of the table and two on the other. I Maybe I should show it like this. Two on one side of the table, one on the other side of the table, right? Now when my parents come over, I sit on the very end of the table so I can get up and serve stuff. My mom sits on the inside of the table on the other side, across from Mr. Mentinol, and my dad sits on the outside of the table, he can get out. So we have three people on one side of the table and two on the other. So how many people are at the table? Five. You see, math is everywhere. Math is not something we just do for 20 minutes every day. It's something that we see all the time. You can count the number of green shirts you have, or red sweaters, or how many different combinations of green and red clothes can you make. Math is everywhere, and we use it all the time. So start being a math detective and looking for where you can find it. So, parent teachers, starting on page 257, where they have to draw up here or represent a number, they want you to use red and yellow bears. Well, I would just use a red crayon and a yellow crayon. And I would, it says to color the row of four bears. So they're gonna color this first row and they're gonna use the combination they want. It could be two yellow and two red. Could be one yellow, three red, as long as we have four there, right? And then they're gonna do the same thing for five in a different combination after they draw what it would look like up here. That's page 257. The same kind of thing happens on the next page, but now we have objects. So now we have four mailboxes and they want you to write numbers. So you're gonna color two of them in one color, blue, and two of them green and write two and two. Perhaps um, they want to do three and one, three pink and one purple. So it would be three and one. And they're using an and instead of a plus. I like to use the plus sign, but at this point, we're just trying to show that numbers can be split up in different ways and still be part of the same number. So the and is appropriate. It continues that way through lesson one. And if you look at lesson two, let me freeze by the homework here. Lesson two starts on page 263. And now it's about how to take them apart. So the first page represented different ways to make numbers and the beginnings of addition. And this is the beginnings of subtraction. So lesson two, 
take a part four and five. Let me move my stars back over. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we played with numbers just a little bit. Hopefully you've looked around the room and this is the second half of the lesson. This is for the next day. And this is take apart four and five. Okay, if I have four of something and I take one part away, what will be left, right? We do this sometimes when we do our uh, math stories with the 10 frame. So here are my four stars and I wanna break apart that into two groups, okay? So I have four, but I have them all on one side. I need to take half of them to the other. So let's move one at a time. Let's see if we can make it even. Do we have more on this side or less? We have more, so they must not be even. So let's move this one over. Okay. So now we have two on one side and two on the other. So this makes it equal. So if I have four and I put them into two groups, how many are just in one group? Just this one group right here. Two, there are two in that group, exactly. And then how many are in this group right here? Mm -hmm. There are two right there. So if I start out with four, I can take two out and have two left. So I can have two here and two here. This is pretty much the opposite of what we did in the first half of the lesson. They started out with the bears already colored on your paper. See right here, this first row is four, right? Okay, your job is to break it into two groups. So how can you show just two of these bears? Mm. You circle just two of them like this. That puts two into one group here, and then you're gonna circle over here and put two in this group. So that it looks like down here, two groups of two in a group, okay? And then you do the same thing with the five, with the five purple bears in the next row. Then on the next pages, they want you to continue making your groups. So you're going to be circling first and tracing for practice. And then down at the bottom, the, your parent teachers will have directions. And that is how you will know what they want you to do with like number five. Number five says, count the objects, circle the objects to show a way to take apart the number. So you get to pick, do you want it to be two and two like this example? Well, that's kind of boring. Let's try something else. What if we just had four of something? And then you just make it into the groups you want, right? So I could put one here and I could have three here. So now I have three and a one. Let's try that again in a better color. A three and a one. Okay, now let's look at five. So if we have five of these things, what are we gonna do then? We need two groups still, right? So we could do a three and a two. Look, I already have two groups now, don't I? I have a three down here and I have a two up here. So they want you to take the whole five and they want you to put it in groups. It could be two and three three and two, or Spock, four and one. It could be five and zero. So you decide how you wanna split that group up, but look at your numbers and make sure that if you were to add them, it would equal five, because what we take apart has to equal the same thing as when we put it back together. So double check that. So ladies and gentlemen, that's lessons one and two which are on the numbers four and five. See you next time.